having this conversation with us this morning is uh, Edna Semeti, who's the CEO of Zindua Korea. She's here last week, last week, but one? Yes. But you're back. <laughs> yes, I'm back. Karibu I'm sana. Thank you. Karibu, karibu sana. So last time we had a conversation, like, you feel me come out to me, yacha, Ivy. <laughs> but then I feel like you've taken us back now mm -hmm. to where this conversation should actually start when you talk mm -hmm. about career development mm -hmm. and children. Mm -hmm. When should that conversation start? Well, Mwikali, thanks so much for, for bringing me back. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. So children, I mean, uh, career development is about learning how to manage your career. Yes. And if you think about it, we grow up to actually become career holders. Yeah. And a lot of uh, success that comes out of career management, mm -hmm. whatever we call success, comes from good decision making. Uh, taking the right actions, being connected, you know, to the right people at the right time. Okay. And these are either habits or thinking patterns. Mm -hmm. And they take a long time to be developed. Okay. So the right time to start would be as soon as a child can even understand any kind of information. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would recommend that as somebody who's worked in human resources for very many years. Mm -hmm. And I have seen young people come into the workplace and fighting the system, not being able to actually thrive through the system because of some underlying issues. You know, the thinking patterns, the shocks that come when you enter the workplace, you realize everything you've been equipped with yeah. in the four years probably on campus are not enough mm. to keep you in the long, for the long haul at the workplace. Okay. And it takes you uh, redoing your thinking patterns, what you're talking about earlier, re, um, reconnecting, learning how to reconnect, how to communicate, having clarity about who you are, what you want to do in the future. And if you had spent time during the days you're going through, you know, your education, learning how to be this, by this time, it would be a habit, a behavior. It would be part of you. So I think the right time for, for us adults, anybody, to start planning for career, managing their careers is when they're still very young. Okay. As we are imparting <coughs> education, the usual education, there should be that bit of career development As in the well. education system. So what does it look like? So w at what age? So when we say mtoto uh, wameanza kuelewa, mm. when they're starting to get in information, what does it look like, mm. this kind of information that we're giving them? on you know career development yeah so if you think about what is what does somebody need to know so that they can manage their career pathways develop themselves in their career lives there are four things the first thing is you really need to know yourself well so that you understand your strengths your weaknesses you understand uh, the things that you have interest in mm -hmm. the things you do very well even without any effort effortlessly okay. Yeah, just that process of really digging deep into your mind. You know, you're a gold mine yes. as an individual. Yes. So understanding yourself. The second thing you really need to know very well is opportunities. And especially in this world today that uh, we call VUCA, it's a VUCA environment. It's volatile. It's ambiguous. It is uncertain. It is very competitive. Mm -hmm. Things are always changing. Technology is changing. Uh, the demands for skills. Uh, what was on demand a few years ago is no longer on demand today and we still have record that in the next five to ten years there will be so very change. many jobs coming in that we don't know of yeah. today. So the skills demand will change again. So because you are living in this environment you really need to study it. Mm -hmm. You need to understand how it's moving. Yeah. You need to understand when it moves. Where, what does that mean for you? Where does it leave you in terms of the skills assets that you have because when you're developing yourself you have a, an, <coughs> a set of skills you know skill set that can help you do the jobs well so where does that leave you when the job demands changes where does that leave you so studying the the job market is very important understanding opportunities who is hiring for what and why how do i prepare myself if i if i'm targeting that employer yeah and then the third thing is now learning to develop those skills okay the skills that employers are looking for, especially the, the employers that you value, the employers mm -hmm. as an individual you're looking <coughs> at and saying, these are the people I'd like to work for, these are the jobs I'd like to work in, because I have what it takes to do it, I have the interest, I have the ambition for them. Mm 
So developing those skills. And you know there are three types of skills. Okay. There is the technical skills, the ones we go to college for, the yes. universities for. The, we learn how to do the job specifically. Mm -hmm. And then there is the soft skills, the, mm. the human skills, you know, learning how to communicate, learning how to think using your cognitive skills, learning how to um, make decisions especially. Uh, empathizing, r using your emotions effectively in the workplace, connecting with people, things like that. And then the third, which is now um, actually a result of what's going on in the marketplace today, the technological changes, is the digital skills. Yeah. So just using um, these, these devices and the digital, uh, the digital devices, the softwares, because we are moving more and more into the technological field and we need to be more conversant or literate with, with digital world. Yeah. So those three skills, <coughs> so learning them, understanding which ones are, are connected to the jobs I have an interest in yeah. and where do I get these skills from. And then the fourth skill is knowing how to advocate for yourself, self-advocacy, knowing how to now step out and say look i'm here i have the skills i have the interests i have the time i'm ready to engage where are you writing cvs you know putting yourself up there doing your personal uh, branding mm. um going out for interviews and winning it you know so those four things so the four things need to be put down in a way that um a person can be able to understand them depending on the age they are in yes. and the stage in life they are in. Mm. So if I'm talking to a nine-year-old yeah. and let's say we are on the uh, self-discovery uh, cycle of learning about career development, mm -hmm. I'll break down that topic for the child so that they are able to dig deep and start understanding themselves where they are. Bearing in mind they are still either in primary school, mm. yeah, obviously in primary school, yes. and what does that mean, learning yourself? learning your strengths. How can you, you use your, the strengths that you have now in school? Because in the future, you're going to grow up and be an adult. Mm. You're going to work with people who are like this. How does that best version of you come out in different circumstances? So it is really designing a curriculum, and uh, we've done that at Zindua Career, yeah. uh, a curriculum that is age appropriate for the children mm. so that they're able to grasp these four areas of career development. It's not, uh, you know, we've seen very young kids get into the space and mm. they've decided they want to be a particular thing when mm -hmm. they grow up. And most of the times they probably don't end up being that. Mm. But then what you're doing then is empowering them or e equipping them mm. with all these other things mm. that they will need. It does not matter if you become a journalist. It doesn't matter if you will become an engineer. You will need to know how to communicate mm -hmm. you will need to know how to work technology mm -hmm. you understand yourself mm -hmm. and decision making at the workplace mm -hmm. so by the time we get to an age where you're getting into university mm -hmm. or maybe high school mm -hmm. and you're choosing your subjects at that point yes. then all these other things you're already buffered yes so yes. now we're just narrowing on the what exactly you will be doing yes actually you've just it's like you are there <laughs> <laughs> it is so brilliant yeah. because it it, 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 it it can be done. Yeah. It can be done. So it doesn't find you at mm -hmm. the workplace now scrappling to, now how do I, what do I do? Yeah. Because you have grown up understanding and learning what it feels like to be in this environment. Yeah. In fact, what we do, we call it uh, career education. Mm -hmm. So we educate you about mm -hmm. careers, mm -hmm. the world of work, mm -hmm. uh, about employers, uh, about uh, learning how to get the job you want, going for interviews, having that self-confidence, so education, uh, career information. So okay. you get the information about the job. So for example, if a child says, I want to become a journalist. Yes. So we get into the details of what does it mean to be a journalist? What do journalists do day to day? Sometimes we even take them to what we call workplace visit. Mm. So like we would bring them here. So they watch you, they watch the rest of the team working, look at the environment so that they're not making a decision about being a journalist because they're seeing you on set.
Yes. Because there's a whole lot of a things different things that go on. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Behind, behind, you know, the then they'll see, oh, they are cameramen. I really don't need to be writing. Probably I'm not so good at writing, but I want to be a journalist. Mm. Oh, I can be a cameraman. I can I can do the lights. I can even be just the person who does the makeup. Yes. I see and I'm still in the journalism environment yeah. working for, for that industry because yes. I like it so much. So we give them that kind of information so that it enhances clarity on their decision. And not just them, even their parents. Because when we are dealing with children, uh, ch they, at this point when children are still dependent with their parents, the yeah. parent has to be involved because the parent has information, but we guide them on how they can redirect that information to help the child make a decision that's good for them, not for the parent. Yes. Yeah, so we give career information. Then there is career guidance. <coughs> so the guidance bit is where now what you're saying. Somebody has now decided this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and then we get into let's explore if it's really a good decision. Is there any other option you can look into? Uh, what challenges are you experiencing that we can help you work through? And that's why we even work closely with psychologists because when it comes to some uh, personal challenges like that are, that are led by uh, psychological barriers or emotional bar barriers. We need the psychologists to be able to have sessions with the students so that the students are able to understand themselves yeah. because we need the student in their best version to make a good decision. Absolutely. Yeah, and then there is now uh, career, mm, career uh, this education, information, guidance, and counseling. Okay. So the counseling bit is where now you're counseled into making that decision. We empower you. We strengthen your decision making. So by the time uh, you're through with the program that we have to offer in schools yeah. with the students, the student feels uh, there's, there's a bit of confidence, a lot of confidence that's built within the student mm -hmm. to be able to say, this is my life and I can own it. Mm -hmm. And then there is clarity about, if I say I'm not going to be a journalist yeah. because I've looked into the journalism environment and I've realized, okay, it's fine, it's nice, but that's, that's not for me. Mm. I probably am best working as a communicator, you know, doing probably advocacy work. I prefer that because we help students understand you have interest as a person. Yes. You are bought with a, you know, you're already a software yourself. You yeah. have a set of uh, interest and emotions that can help you be the best person for your life. Mm. So just identifying that, that's what we work with the students. So they'll be able to say, maybe maybe not a journalist, but yes. somewhere in communication. Okay. It can work for me. Okay. We are going to pay our bills, but Edna is not going anywhere. We're still talking <laughs> about his career development, especially in children, and how, when it should start, and the direction it should take. And it's not just for Zindua, um, and the children, it is also for you as a parent to be able to get this knowledge and guide them. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go too far. Kali, we are talking matters, career development for children. At what point does this begin? What are the structures around that? Do they even know what they want to be? And at what age do they figure that out? So we are looking into all of that and I see questions coming through mm. for you here. We have Edna Semeti, who's the CEO of Zindua Career, who's taking us through this conversation. Simon from Kikuyu says, mm. I am a parent of two kids. One is grade four and the other one is grade two. Mm. Now concerning this topic, how can a child aspire to a career they don't to know exists okay yeah that's a very good question and the truth is children know what they want to be mm -hmm. um, they grow up hearing what's going on what people are doing they hear what the parents are doing words start forming in their mindset in the school curriculum they are taught about potential jobs that are coming up so they start building aspirations mm -hmm. the point would be to encourage those as aspirations to actually make it a daily conversation, a conversation that is in our daily lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And a parent can do that by just asking a simple question. Have you thought about what you want to be when you grow up? Or questions like, do you know you're going to grow up and be like me very soon? Mm. And one day you're going to be a mommy or a daddy. One day you're going to have your own job. Have you thought about what you want to do? And you know, at that point, they could say things that are really close to them that they have enjoyed or, 
uh, if a parent has shown them what they do as well, they could talk about that. They would say like, I want to be like you, daddy. If, you, if you're a pilot, they'd say, I want to be a pilot like you. If you're, even if you're a driver, they would say, I want to be a driver like you. Yeah. And that's where the conversation begins. <laughs> and you start building on that. There's no harm in, in, in indulging. Yes, and building that idea that one day you're going to grow up and you're going to have a life full of responsibilities, one of them being your own job and career. Mm. It's really important that they start right now. <laughs> I'm just remembering myself as a child. Mm. See, my dad was an accountant mm -hmm. and my mom ran a business. Mm -hmm. So my mom owned a salon mm -hmm. and i remember saying to her that i don't think i can do what she does okay. because they stand up for so like for so many hours oh yeah and then of course i was doing terrible at math so the accountancy yeah. was not a thing <laughs> so <laughs> i think they saw my future yeah before i could even see it yeah. because whatever it is they were doing yeah it no. wasn't you. Yes. And but then okay. they guided. They saw. Yeah. So it's also the role of the parent to be able to see yeah. and encourage and direct. Yeah, I like what you said. See, encourage and direct. Yeah. And don't expect your child to like what <laughs> you do as well because your child is themselves you know yes. they were born with their whole set of first of all there's the destiny god has for them mm. they have their own strengths they have their own weaknesses yeah um and because god has a destiny for them he has already declared what kind of mistakes they'll make in their lives mm. so they have their own path so ours is to just nurture as parents when we are talking as parents ours is to nurture that strength encourage them to realize the weakness mm. when the weaknesses start coming up yeah you know it's no time to beat them down and say you know for example you'd hear parents say oh you said you want to be a journalist yet you can't even write you don't even mm. want to write you don't beat down on the weakness you, you encourage you encourage it by saying things like uh, you know what, if I'm going to be a journalist, if I were you, because I want to be a journalist, I would really practice how to write because yeah. journalists write a lot. Yeah. And you develop that interest by even you having an interest, especially the younger children. Because when you, when you start encouraging career conversations at home uh, for the younger children, you have to be 100% engaged. And then probably the engagement will reduce for, from you as they grow older and they start holding the reins more and mm. more and they're making mm. decisions by themselves. Okay. And probably you connect them now to career advisors who can support them and walk that journey with them because it's a different perspective now. Yeah, so I would really tell you, tell uh, that parent in Kikuyu, yes. continue that conversation or even yeah. start it if you haven't. Yeah. Just, you know, Just ask. start. Find out yeah. if they're interested in even what you're doing because yeah. that's the first things. The first careers we learn are the ones that are around us. Yes, exactly. Like what your dad is doing, what your mom, your mm -hmm. auntie is doing. Mm -hmm. So that conversation is already there. Mm -hmm. It's just guiding it. We have another one here, mm -hmm. um, Edna. Is it Edna or Edna is you? Mm -hmm. So that's not there. So they're saying, hi, Mikali. I love the conversation mm -hmm. on career development for children. My son is an introvert. Mm -hmm. He rarely socializes and plays with his friends and is always in the house. I always wonder what career is suitable for him because mm. I'm not so sure he will thrive in the work environment well, especially mm. social careers. Mm. What skills would Edna mm. advise I start mm. building up in him at this point? Okay. Yeah. Right. So there, there are two things. There's the issue of uh, the idea the parent has about what being an introvert might mean. Mm -hmm. and probably it means a disadvantage for the child. Mm -hmm. And I would like to really encourage the parent and, uh, and tell the parent this. Introverts are one, actually they are one of the people who are sought in the workplace because introvertish nature gives people the ability to be deep thinkers, mm. to be great observers, mm. and to be very detailed and careful Keen. Yeah, yeah. And introverts can work anywhere. They c and it, we can have musicians who are introverts. Yes. You can have journalists who are introverts. You can have um, writers who are introverts. We can even have accountants. We're expecting that accountants are the ones who are introverts. We can have uh, accountants who are extroverts. So the introvertish nature does not direct that this child will do very well mm. in a specific career or not. 
what will uh, tell the parent about their child is where c where do they thrive and it starts with the child mm. have that conversation with the child what are your interests have you thought about careers that question is really really important if you've never had a career conversation mm -hmm. in your home as a parent the first place is to just ask have you ever thought about what you'll do in your future which careers come to your mind and when you're listening as a parent don't listen with the idea that if they mention a career and you think you know your child in a certain way, you'll be like, I, I don't think you're suitable for that career. Yeah. Because you've asked them about their interests, yes. not the, uh, their opinion of what you mm. think their interests should be. Okay. So allow the child to speak and say, I think I've been thinking about being an artist. When they say, I want to be an artist, don't go like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. you're casting doubt on the child. Take it in. Observe. Ask him what makes you think that you can do well as an artist. Mm -hmm. You'd be surprised. Sometimes when they're doing the things they do at school, yeah. he probably was interested. A teacher encouraged him. He got interested in art. He started drawing. And all this while you had no idea. Yeah. You would be surprised he's been drawing. He has gone maybe even to art exhibitions. Yeah. He has connections out there. So I would really advise that to have the conversation with the child first. Ask, just ask the child, what do you want? And when they tell you, practice the listening skills of, you know, mm -hmm. the, the way we are told, mm -hmm. give the feedback. Oh, that's interesting. Why do you think that's a good area for you? Mm -hmm. What support can I offer you? Yeah. And if at all uh, you find that the support they're asking you is something you, you're not able, then seek for assistance. We are here, the career advisors. We yes. can actually help you know how to maneuver conversations with your child yeah. so that you, you are giving them that support and mm -hmm. redirecting them. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's Miriam here, mm -hmm. uh, a Form 4 student, mm -hmm. who says, I'm so passionate in doing IR mm -hmm. after school, but I really need career guidance about the course so I can be sure whether it's the best one for me. Please help where possible. So mm -hmm. you're in high school, you mm -hmm. have had this name, mm -hmm. probably do not know or have the details mm -hmm. of what this career entails. What would be your advice to them in understanding what that career, whatever it is, entails? So IR. International relations. Oh, is it international yes. relations? Okay, so I was thinking I had industrial revolution. <laughs> 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 it's uh, international relations, if I am not wrong, but I, I think it's, in, it's inter international relations. Okay, so I believe international relations is a course. Yes. Um, in very many universities, meaning that international relations can lead you to careers such as uh, the diplomatic missions, you know, working in embassies, mm. you know, working in NGOs where uh, you're probably in the, in, the, in the Department of Communication, advocacy, writing. Uh, you can also work as a marketing agency, yeah. you know, for, for NGOs especially. Mm -hmm. Because the international relations course gives you the skills to know how to communicate, especially uh, in tricky, sensitive, or conflict environments, help people relate, uh, and it's big uh, in, in, in um, large-scale environments or corporate environments. Yeah, that's international mm -hmm. relations. So for someone who is in high school and they're thinking, I think I like international relations, the first question I would ask is, how are you doing on the subjects that give you a foundation for doing international relations at a higher level? Yeah. Uh, and those subjects are English, mm. of course, mathematics. Mathematics, is <laughs> you don't like it. Uh, good news is mathematics is cuts across all careers. Yeah, so it's okay. So math. <laughs> English, Kiswahili. Yes, the languages. A bit of history. Yeah, history. If you love languages, that's yes. really good because high chances are you'd be in a working environment where you'd be required to connect with a lot of people with different languages and you can catch on very fast. Okay. So if you love languages, that's a good thing. If you love history mm -hmm. uh, and mathematics. So you need to look at those subjects because those are the ones that will give you uh, the open door to the higher education after high school. And, and then research, even more research. Mm -hmm. the, thank you for asking in because mm -hmm. you are really interested and you're doing something about it. Mm -hmm. Go online.
online, try to look around mm -hmm. what is it, what universities offer this. Yeah. During the holidays, you can just pop in, ask what it is that they would require mm -hmm. for you to have, where the job opportunity, the market looks like, you know, all of that. So that when you decide to step in, then you're sure, sure, sure mm. that this is what you want to do. But you're on the right path. Yes. Question for you, Edna. Also employers. Do, uh, also employers. Look at the employers who yes. hire and yes. if those employers interest you. Yes. Yeah. That's true. That is so true. Um, when we talk about homeschooling, mm. um, does it th are the children who are homeschooled mm -hmm. at a better chance of being understood in terms of what career they want to partake mm. when compared to you know kawaida regular going to school school? Okay, so homeschooling, the system of homeschooling is providing your child mm -hmm. with the education system at home. Yes under the uh, training and leadership or directly of the parent yes the way the parent arranges mm -hmm. as opposed to learning in a group setting yes with the other children in a school setting mm -hmm. and for me what i understand because it, it's actually a regula it's regulated mm -hmm. homeschooling uh, the homeschooling system really needs to cover all the elements of learning that happen in the school setting. Mm -hmm. So the way it's been set up, the parent sets up, uh, has to make sure that there is socialization, they're learning through the curriculum, whatever curriculum it is, mm -hmm. and they're gaining the skills, they're being tested, they're being qualified, yeah? Okay. All that has to take place. So for me, what I, I would advise is, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I would say is, if at all a child is going through uh, homeschooling, they probably will stand out better than any other child who's in the school setting depending on the teacher mm. depending on the system and also depending on the child so okay. i don't think they're at, at an advantage okay. or disadvantage i okay. don't think so i feel like we have one more minute nicole one more minute one more question is that okay Okay, Haraka. Morning, Mikali. Does the type of toys I buy my kids when they are young help? I see my daughter loving doctor-like kind of toys. Does mm -hmm. that help mold the type of career they might settle for in future? <laughs> I'm Lois from Buruburu. <laughs> oh, that's nice, Lois. Wow. So nice. <laughs> in 30 um, seconds. Okay. I, I think, what I think is, yes. uh, it helps open conversations on career. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the doctor. Mm. This is what happens. And it just puts knowledge in the child's mind. Okay. So in the future, it might help to say, uh, to v validate that, yes, I loved toys from when I was a baby as for the doctors. And until now, I still love uh, playing around with the adult toys. toys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. How, can get, how can people get in touch with you, Edna? Well, okay. So I welcome parents and uh, schools that are interested in the work readiness training program that we offer at Zindua Career. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can be reached on 0718861654. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's how that's I can it. be reached. Yeah. Great. Mm. We're going to take a very short commercial break. We'll be right back. This is Full Circle with Mwikali.